Hey guys, Adam from Surf and Dog Training. Just out here, looking with the pooches, okay? And we're gonna make a little video, okay? Today's topic is stress, and whether or not it's okay to stress your dog out a little bit during training. Now, again, there's a massive divide in the dog training industry. You've got balanced dog trainers who use a combination of all four quadrants of operant conditioning. They will use tons and tons of positive reinforcement, but they will also use corrections and punishment. Okay? Uh, and then you've got the Fox Free trainers who don't use any form of punishment really. Uh, they won't correct the dog and they believe that adding stress to a dog makes them worse. Now, what I want to talk about. Fred Poop. Okay, bear with me. Good job I had it in selfie mode. I can see Fred in the background squid, so we're gonna go and pick up a poop. But what I want to talk about is the notion that adding stress to your dog makes the dog worse. Yeah, see many, many of my clients, okay, we saw a poop bag. See, many of my clients. Hold on, I'm gonna have to stop this. So many of my clients will uh, come to me after trying full three dog trainers. Yeah, because it sounds brilliant on paper. Yeah, it does. Why wouldn't you want to fix everything with treats, praise, fuss, being kind, basically. So but what happens is, for instance, the job I was working on the other day was this Mastiff, okay, dog-reactive Mastiff. It wasn't even that bad, it wasn't. Uh, but, Fred, this way, it wasn't even that bad. But, uh, the trainer had, uh, sorry, the client had been going to this trainer, well-known company in Southend, uh, for nigh on 15 months. Uh, and in the 15 months of going there, they weren't able to achieve getting the dog to walk past another dog. Just to be next to another dog without it reacting. Yeah, and in 10 minutes, this way, in 10 minutes of working with this dog, I had a walking around Sammy. Yeah, ow, let's go. I had a walking around Sammy. So, 10 minutes versus 15 months. And this is where the stress part comes in. Because full three trainers refuse to add any stress to a dog because they say it's gonna make the dog worse, they actually leave the dog stressed for a lot, lot longer. Yeah, 15 months, guys, of working with this dog, trying to get it okay with other dogs. Yeah, all because they want to not tell the dog no for reacting because they don't want to put it around what makes them uncomfortable 15 months so you imagine that's 15 months of the dog living with this and it's a young dog as well that's his puppyhood and adolescence having difficulties with other dogs that's all the dog knows yeah. all right he's it's insane 15 months and this is the excuse they use balance training is a quick fix blah 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 yeah we're suppressing the dog's reactivity blah 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 but the reality is right 15 months to do something that can be done in one session yeah 15 months may not seem like a long time to a human who lives what average 70 80 years maybe more yeah, so 15 months to a human, 15 months to a dog is the difference between puppyhood and adolescence. The difference between adolescence and adulthood. It's, it's a lot, yeah? Dogs age completely different to us. They don't live as long as us. So 15 months to a dog is a long, long time, okay? And this, people go, oh, it's just a couple of bad trainers and they're giving us a bad name. No, it's not, guys. Because I've been to freaking Birmingham, I've been to Norwich, I've been to London, I've been to freaking Kent, Brighton, I've been all over the country dealing with trainers that have been to these positive well, owners trainers. Yeah? And it's always the same story. It doesn't matter where I go, okay? It's always the same story. So it's not just locally, it's across the country. 
yeah so they can't keep using that as an excuse there's just a few bad trainers we're not all like that because it seems every single trainer I've ever gone to has gone to a positive only trainer or a full three trainer same song and dance all the time now the thing about stress stress is a part of life guys we all know that yeah and stress doesn't necessarily have to be the worst thing in the world yeah, you imagine doing something for the first time, you're out of your comfort zone, it can be stressful, starting a new job for the first time, not having a clue what you're doing, being around people that you may be nervous because you don't want to make a fool of yourself, you may not, it, it's stressful, right? But then you have somebody that goes through it with you, somebody that helps you out, and then the stress gets less and less and less until it's not stressful anymore. Fred, come mate. And that, that's the part of stress. So I would rather, if a dog doesn't like another dog, right? I would rather put it next to another dog, right? If, if it reacts, give it a correction. The correction isn't to punish the dog. The correction is simply to snap the dog out of it. As soon as you correct a dog, if you do it properly, the dog instantly focuses on the hand. Then you can give the dog positive information. Then you can start rewarding the dog, okay? So if we go back to this Mastiff, there was 15 months, right? And they didn't want to do that. I done that, and in 10 minutes, he's walking around another dog, yeah? So what's worse, 15 months of stress, or a few minutes of stress to, for the dog to then figure out nothing bad's gonna happen with this dog, yeah? A good handler will teach their clients how to deal with stress, they won't avoid situations, and a good handler, sorry, will teach a dog how to deal with stress. Yeah, because we're in the animal kingdom, stress is a part of life, it's unavoidable. Even if trainers say, oh, you gotta keep the dog under the threshold, if the dog reacts, it's your fault. That's great in a fairy tale world, guys, it is. But the reality is, some of the advice these people are getting, like a beagle I worked with the other day, because the dog got stressed on the walks, don't walk the dog. So the dog's getting more frustrated, yeah, because it's getting all this pent up energy. Yeah, it's all about avoiding instead of dealing with what makes you uncomfortable. So, this way Fred. So, this is what the topic of this video is about, yeah. Confronting, adding some stress to your dog actually helps the dog build confidence because it's only stressful the first couple of times, then it gets easier and easier and easier. Yeah, and many times these dogs are stressed because they're not getting adequate information because they're always avoiding. And going back to what I said about keeping a dog under the threshold, that's great, yeah, if you wanna do some classroom dog training. That's great if you've got a controlled environment, but we live in an uncontrolled environment, yeah. You can't stop Josephine coming, letting her dogs come around the corner first on a flexi lead, taking you by surprise. You can't stop that drunken twat running around with his staffy off lead, running over to you as you're walking around the streets, okay? Stress is a part of life, and unfortunately, as much as you try and keep a dog under the threshold, right, there's always gonna come a time when you can't because we live in the real world, okay? So if your trainer hasn't taught you how to bring your dog back down to reality when it loses its mind, or taught the dog how to be around these dogs because they're just avoiding it, this way, then you end up back at square one. Yeah? Avoiding a situation doesn't fix a problem. It doesn't, it's just avoiding a situation. You think about something in your life that you're concerned about, that you're worried about. How many of us have put off addressing this? Yeah, we're all, all guilty of it. But does that problem go away? No, many times that problem can get worse and worse until you have to address it, yeah? And that is part of dog training. Unfortunately, it's not always tea and biscuits. It's not always rainbows and unicorns, guys. Unfortunately, stress is a part of life. Good trainers will teach the dog how to deal with the stress. And just for the record, okay, there's a difference between exposing your dog to a small amount of stress and flooding your dog. This is where we get lumped into the category. They reckon confronting a dog with what makes them afraid is flooding a dog. No, it's not. It, exposing your dog to one dog, if your dog's uncomfortable with a dog, teaching your dog how to deal with that, then you add in a second dog, teach your dog how to deal with that, and a third dog. That's a little bit stressful for the dog, but each dog you add in is easier and easier and easier because the dog has proper guidance. 
if your dog's scared of dogs and you throw it in a classroom with seven other dogs and you haven't even assessed this dog, your dog's gonna fall apart. If you just join a pack walk and your dog's reactive to dogs and it's had no initial training, it's gonna fall apart, yeah? You don't put a dog that is nervous of other dogs around 20, 30 dogs straight off the bat. Even five, 10 dogs, there's far too many, yeah? One at a time, expose it, teach it how to deal with it. Once that dog's okay with that, you add in another dog, okay? And then another dog, okay? And then you can start to put your dog in a group class because now it can handle that situation. Then you start to attend pack walks, okay? So that's the topic of today's conversation, stress. It's okay to add stress to your dog. Stress is part of life, okay? Don't let anybody tell you that adding stress to your dog will make them worse, yeah? They may get very stressed to begin with, but you're there to help them through it, and then that stress becomes less and less and less. Avoiding stress is avoiding a situation. That means your dog has to live with that problem a lot, lot longer, yeah? So don't listen to the bullshit that balance trainers are quick fix trainers, because it's not a quick fix at all. It's just we are not naive enough to know that stress does not exist, and we will add a little bit of stress to a dog to help him out the other side. So, go Fred. Come bud, come say hello. Boom! <laughs> yeah. Ah, calm down. Stop. Good boy. Yeah. So that's the topic of today's conversation, guys. As always, please just scroll down as you're watching this. Hit that like button and please share this video. Fred, enough. Standing still, addressing the audience. Don't pounce all over Moo, okay? Yeah see that human conversation has no idea what I'm saying he just understood the word no that was it because guys no is a word that you can teach your dog and they understand what it is yeah just the same as yes come and get a reward good I'm gonna give you a reward break you're a free dog sit down dogs can understand words one of those words they can understand as well is no yeah so that's it for today guys please share this video hit the like button subscribe you'll be watching this on youtube there's a little bell icon click on that turn on notifications and it'll let you know every time we upload a new video so, have so a good what day, i'm going to do for you right now to build that little confidence up back into a sit sit you are going to say hill and you are going to walk in a 360 round sammy and you are not going to let your dog pull you towards her react to my dog you're going to make my dog feel as comfortable as possible why because you can down so whenever you're ready it's a nice little 360. if he cuts across you you pull up on that lead that's it keep going nice keep going hill keep going Walk off, walk off, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking and make a big fucking fuss of him because that was awesome. And look at the towel, look at him, right? He loves a fuss, you love to give a fuss, give him a fuss. Yeah. Right, Sammy, in you get. Atta girl. <laughs>